as much as I'm attracted towards, let's say, success at work or um, a loving relationship, the more I try, the more I fail, kind of, or the more it's unsatisfying. I look for satisfaction there and it's unsatisfying. Hello, <laughs> welcome to this video. Um, I have today the possibility to talk with Jaya. Um, <laughs> she is a meditation teacher and uh, goes around in the world and yeah, make wonderful retreats we had right now in Leipzig. Uh, and first I ask you to introduce yourself for the people who maybe don't know you. Okay. And welcome and thank you for thank you. being here with me. So my, I'm, my name is Jaya Ashmore, and I grew up in the United States studying religion and art. And I went to India when I was 20 and kept going back and kept staying and immersed in different ways in different cultures in the Indian subcontinent and received wonderful teachings, and including just the, some of the teachings of this living in simplicity where there's not necessarily hot water coming in the sink, for example. There's not necessarily air conditioning. Anymore. There might not be electricity, <laughs> even if there's a fan. Electricity <laughs> might be off. And this has been also part of my path, I would say, is the simplicity and a practice of adapting and not only making things always only more convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also learning meditation from living teachers, mm -hmm. not only from the books that I tried to learn from before I went to India. So I had the honor of being invited to teach in 1998, and I started teaching meditation in 1999, a year later, with a lot of help from good friends and teachers. And it's been a joy in and among the challenges and all that I keep on learning myself. Wonderful to practice together over so many years. Yeah. In often really beautiful places as well. Nature as another part of my path. Mm -hmm. And I have also lived, as well as India, I've, I've also been based partly in Spain for the last 10 years or so and helped, I uh, co-created a eco-hermitage there, permaculture, off-the-grid kind of yeah. place, and that's been, uh, that's in my heart as well. So I uh, have, we can say homes many places, <laughs> or a nomadic, nomadic mm -hmm. heart, but the heart of my life is really meditation, yeah. and um, people who love to meditate, and I love art and nature as well. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Good mixture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been important for me to allow the different threads to keep weaving together. Yeah. Sometimes more art, sometimes more. I practice the Japanese art of Jinshin Jutsu. Sometimes more just, just formal meditation. Sometimes more just teaching. More just people. More just simplicity. Mm -hmm. But it, they seem the threads keep keep weaving together, yeah. and it's that's rich. Yeah. Yeah. It gives a sense of loving the long uh, journey of life and uh, appreciating being older. <laughs> people, I just turned fifty a couple months ago, and people usually uh, seem to think getting older is a drag or mm -hmm. a problem, and. I find it rich. Yeah. Even the body getting older, just like so, <laughs> like all those other bodies. It's not my body. It's, it's that human body doing its thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but the richness of the long friendships and the long journey of meditation, bearing fruit. Yeah. Is uh, I wouldn't like to go back in time. <laughs> yeah. I will put all the information about Jaya and Damaloka uh, in the info box, so you, if you are interested, you find uh, 
the way to her page and yeah cool. yeah and um, yeah now I will start with this five question I always ask the same it's the first time in English so um, we will see how <laughs> maybe there is some culture differences <laughs> with the answers mm -hmm. um, yeah are you ready for sure. the first question yes, okay I'm ready. and I have a an paper that helps me so um, what was the trigger for your change to a conscious life? Mm -hmm. Was there a point or um, an issue? Yeah. It's interesting if that could be a cultural thing or not. That the word, it's, I don't find a trigger so much as, um, first of all, since childhood already feeling very, through nature and also my family's church, feeling mm -hmm. very much connected to the spiritual uh, side of life, if, if it's a side. <laughs> um, but if I think of what might have been moments that might have, without that, I don't know what would have mm -hmm. happened. One is this very funny thing that happened when I was 13. I, afterwards, it's, I realized how funny. <laughs> I was 13, and the church that my family went to had a really cool youth group. Uh, fit, it fit me very well. We would we would go on adventures, camping, hiking, in nature, and talking about important things. Not necessarily using church language or culture. Just meeting and being in life, and it was great. And one of the programs was the minister of the church, the the head of the church, would meet with the thirteen year old girls, and go camping and this kind of thing and at the end of that year he gave me a gift of a book by Ram Das who is um, formerly Richard Alpert who was famous for being at Harvard doing LSD experiments mm -hmm. and then having an Indian guru and becoming a guru himself and so it's a book about his meeting with his teacher and it talks also plenty about his acid trips and experiments and crazy adventures in India. So he um, gave you this. Well, I was thirteen, and the Christian <laughs> Presbyterian, which is kind of very, um, like, very spare, not, not um, decorated kind of church, gave this book to me, <laughs> and um, I knew then mm, I want to go to India. I would like um. to. I'd like to meet a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's one thing that I, I wonder, like, wow, how did, how did that happen? And uh, that, that's the first thing I can remember, I can think of, that would be about India mm -hmm. and going to India and going to India for spiritual teachings. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in college and interested in religion and art and psychology and neurology and everything, um, the religion department at my college was very good. Mm -hmm. And there I found this Buddhist studies program in India. So without mm -hmm. that, I knew I wanted to go to India. I don't know what would have happened to me if at that age I had gone alone. But going on this Buddhist studies program, I had, mm -hmm. there was, meditation was part of it with Asian teachers, live, practicing twice a day, having short retreats, uh, having very um, precious, uh, high teachings given to us, 20-year-olds, you know, totally undeserving <laughs> but it was wonderful so mm -hmm. then from there on was sort of the mm -hmm. avenue was wide open okay. yeah but when I think why I started to be interested in meditation and trying to meditate from books and like many people I see the instructions sit up straight and follow your breath and I notice I can't do it so I think oh I can't I can't do it mm -hmm. and then what I did was lie down <laughs> and, and later, I, later, I, later I realized, oh, for me, lying down was meditation. It was good. I did exactly the thing I needed to do. But I thought I was a failure, mm -hmm. <laughs> closing the book, putting it down. Oh, well, I can't meditate, so I'll just do this other thing <laughs> of connecting with <laughs> inner peace or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there, were no, there, there was not um, that you get sick and then no. you... No, at this point. Mm -hmm. I was lucky that it was not a from a crisis mm -hmm. that I yeah. turned to look for help. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was just um, when I was younger, something of prayer and c kind of in nature, feeling very attuned and loving, 
mm-hmm. nature, or really appreciating the beauty and the wonder with wonder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then luckily I came at just the beginning of these possibilities of being yeah. in touch with meditation and yeah. now it's there's so many but at that time that was very new yeah so. and then yeah it's uh it's so easy to get in contact with yeah. spiritual things uh. yeah i had the same experience when i went there I was 19 and then my first meditation class i just remembered yeah um and, uh, it's nice yeah and easy to find that yeah so, and then at, once I came back from that into college, I was studying religion and art, and I realized that the religion department at the college was really the history of philosophy or something. It wasn't, it's not really religion in the way mm-hmm. that I experienced it in meditation mm-hmm. and in India, where it's so alive everywhere. And yeah. so then I realized, ah, I don't want to study history mm-hmm. <laughs> or theory. I want to be in contact more directly yeah. so then I shifted out of the religion department fully into the art department because that mm-hmm. was my best way of doing this direct contact mm-hmm. yeah. with aliveness let's say so and then I could go back to India unexpectedly I had a grant to study women's folk art and it kept the way kept mm-hmm. opening for me to yeah. continue one door after the other. yeah nice mm-hmm. okay thank you um, can you tell us uh, see, uh, three things that give you strength? Strength. Strength, yeah. 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 In your life. So important. Yeah. Well, the, my meditation practice, for sure, which is, I, we call it deep rest meditation. So both resting gives a lot of room for there to be enough energy that's sort of clean and smooth and flowing. So then the more likely for insight, more likely for priorities to be clear, uh, more likely to have energy to meet what's important and to be connected to the deep in mm-hmm. daily life. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the primary support. Um, and then maybe the second and third could be with my teachers, the connection, and probably my connection with my children, mm-hmm. yeah. And in both of the, with my teachers and with my children, the feeling of um, sort of a hundred percent connection, mm-hmm. which I think, when I remember when my son was born um, about ten years ago, nine and a half years ago, it was the feeling of oh. Finally, I'm allowed to love 100%. Mm-hmm. And then that made me realize that my programming or, and situations, I, I had obviously felt not quite encouraged or allowed or empowered or trained to love 100%. That, that I had to hold some love back mm-hmm. and relate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so then this experience with my son, like, oh, and what a relief to just let the 100% love and connection be there. And then the hard training of motherhood, of nursing in the night and being so tired and the 100% in action also helps to uh, mm, it's both like coming to ground so like you have to remember Mm -hmm. the food at this Mm -hmm. time and not half an hour later and starting the nap now and not then, not too soon, not too late. So very grounded, but not rigid. Mm -hmm. So there's a great and very challenging uh, ground for practice or context for practice just in my experience of mothering. So, and then with my daughter, the same, uh, in a completely different person. The Mm -hmm. daughter is so different from the son, but also kind of, okay, I can feel in the three years in between that there's some skillfulness has developed by practice, by experience, and and yes, just giving up all all those norm normally we think of as adult and more professional and more, which is really trying too hard, pretense, being too serious, not being serious enough, kind of <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. everything not essential can drop down, and this is your life. Live 
Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think in the relationships with my teachers and my children, it's also those contexts where it can bring out both the best and the worst, mm -hmm. like the hardest and the most um, good, let's say, yummy or amazing, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and not repressing what's in process, sharp, needs, needs still to be digested or released or untangled, like it, all of it, like not, not about pretense, pretending, imagining, just like it's a real situation that yeah. brings out the best and the worst and mm -hmm. let's just go on here, let's do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I think from there I can say like my encouragement to people has to do with uh, really our own flow of practice and really our community of practice, mm -hmm. both the sort of elders and also the ones that are in our care, but learning in giving and receiving in both of those. It's not that the teacher is only giving, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's not that with my children I'm only giving and not receiving, but it is really different, of course, uh, flavor. There is some, definitely, the respect and um, a different kind of respect with the kids. Um, but the importance of that, like real, real living and real people, um, I think it's very rare that without that we can have enough strength for, mm -hmm. the, for the path and for just even living, yeah. mm -hmm. which maybe is not two things, living and the path. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, between uh, going to the next question or asking. Uh, so uh, ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you um, say a little bit about your practice, uh, meditation practice, what from your daily life, or it, mm -hmm. because you said this gives you yeah. the power and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How? <laughs> yeah. So some practical. Well, I think it's partly um, having gone through so many years. Now it it doesn't need m much fiddling maintenance of like thinking about mm -hmm. when I need to meditate. Mm -hmm. But that's important, and so it's for each person a process. I think of mm -hmm. through experience that for a while at that time in the morning is a good time mm -hmm. for about about that amount of time yeah. preferably in that kind of place you know the, all yeah. the all the conditions that are supportive for the practice and then of course that evolves the life situation changes something inside also something outside also and and then that other time of day is good or that other form and so now it's not a so much of a feeling of thinking about mm -hmm. what am i doing Like, I'm not thinking about how to ride a bicycle. Yeah. Um, but giving, t enough, giving time, giving enough time. So if I, if I just answer your question as it stands, like, about me, it's giving time for mm -hmm. what happens when I, when I give time, <laughs> when I lie down mostly, mm -hmm. sometimes sitting, but usually lying down. Um, I like to many times do self-help self Jinshin Jitsu, so maybe a hand on the shoulder, a hand on the front hip or holding a finger or chest and belly uh, and, but I don't I put the hands and I don't think that's just a position mm -hmm. and then there's um, restfulness kind of quietening into into a deep I can call a deep place or where the the any kind of busyness thinking about what I need to do or whatever can quiet down and maybe we can call it silence or stillness or depth or magic of life or uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and so if we say like, okay, to clear space and let life emerge, mm -hmm. but not me tracking how is life emerging or describing, but just letting that happen. And then also not tracking what that does in my daily life, but knowing that that's the well that everything drinks water from. And so then from there, the way of cooking dinner, etc., everything is, yeah. has, has drink. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then it's sort of, if it's like, how might that help another person? It's that encouragement is practice and know that it can really make a difference if it's half an hour earlier, five minutes longer, two minutes shorter, mm-hmm. or it's a time that it needs to be more flexible that one day is 20 minutes, one day 45, mm-hmm. one day is all day, one day is nothing. There's a time where we need to be more regular and give a foundation to the yeah. form and then let other times the form is freed from the structure into what the structure serves, the flow of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that one of the fruits of practicing more and over longer time, but especially in the lifestyle, giving room for when it is, when it does happen, that we can go really deep or really quiet, whatever word we like to use to describe. When that happens, and we can stay as long as it, as long as it's happening, we can stay. Mm -hmm. If the lifestyle supports that, that's really wonderful and helpful. And you can kind of feel like the dewy, dewiness, do dew, like I think it's Tao, Tao or Tao in tao. German? Tao. Yeah. It, that's there. Mm-hmm. It's still from each time that allowing that happen. You can still feel something fresh and mm-hmm. given and clear, like mm, pure even. Yeah. Yeah. Even if there, it's a mess and a... Uh, there's something. Mm. Yeah, I could feel this when we had this meditation days. It was really like um, arriving to the truly kati, just mm. without um, this I should be and this I have to be. And yeah, it was really nice yeah. Yeah. to arrive by myself. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's, it could be the, uh, the similar question, but um, maybe there is something different. What is important in your life? So I already spoke about some of what's important. And so if I could say in addition to my meditation practice, teachers and children, <laughs> um, it feels important to me to be present with people that I know who are in their own meditation practice, to be present with them in those important moments, just to be present there and maybe just by resonating together or giving a word of encouragement that they let their their natural come through mm-hmm. or happen to them even when it can be scary or messy painful powerful intense mm-hmm. big small yeah. yeah but against their expectation or preference something like mm-hmm. ugly or beautiful they were expecting the other thing happens and it but feeling the goodness of it when it's really mm-hmm. evolving or emerging from their meditation mm-hmm. um that feels important. Mm. And I feel that's important because then that person is more able, capable to really move with their potential. Mm -hmm. So that can really bring to their community, their family, their inner life and outer life, their work, their home, their neighborhood, Mm -hmm. their country, whatever. So, and it feels like we're more aware in the current political atmosphere of really what's always been going on, but we're more aware of how it can make a difference for one person to say or to not say something, Mm -hmm. to do or to not do something that their programming, they would have just, if they were just going along kind of asleep, Mm -hmm. they would just do that, of course, and uh, we all understand, but, or they would not do it, they'd be too shy. And so to kind of help us pop out of our habit energy, just by the friendship, being together and in the quiet in that moment. So re- the retreats give a good chance for that and they meanwhile give us all a chance to keep yeah. our practice momentum going and discover together. Sounds like you are really, um, like the, you love the connection to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really appreciate people's willingness and honesty mm-hmm. and 
sincerity and and what the potential is, like what can happen. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it feels a little bit like what a midwife, maybe, I've never been a midwife, but maybe it's something like that. that yeah. By being there, some you can help someone give birth to something. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I never and saw you at the midwife. <laughs> and even if they never, even if they didn't need help, but to be there as an honor kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. To be uh, yeah. in that threshold. Yeah. Mm, <coughs> the mm, fourth question: um, What kind of advice do you have to have a uh, satisfied life? What would you say? What? Ah, to give advice for someone for to for have the a satisfied life. People mm -hmm. who are looking yeah. through this video. Yeah. I think it can be helpful to really take time, maybe being on retreat and maybe after retreat, to still take another few days when there's still the quiet streaming through to really reflect and receive. We can't necessarily try to remember but or get an overview of our lives, but to feel what are the situations where um, as much as I'm attracted towards, let's say, success at work or um, a loving relationship, the more I try, the more I fail, kind of, or the more it's unsatisfying. I look for satisfaction there and it's unsatisfying. To, to kind of, like, let that stop us in our tracks, like, oh, that's, I've been doing, that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to get satisfaction in relationship or work or even meditation or the right house, fixing the kitchen of the right house, or even in creativity, like, it could be a wonderful activism or any any wonderful um, area of life but our approach is one that will be about dissatisfaction and to kind of feel that like okay however good work it is or however noble it is to wish for a loving relationship or to be kind in the community or whatever like the the starting point is dissatisfaction and it's going to end in dissatisfaction mm -hmm. <laughs> And so the satisfied life, feeling what, what are the situations that let the comparing and competing mentality die down, be more quiet, that's one thing. What are the situations that help oneself feel one's, the value of one's, or the preciousness and value of one's own life and gifts and even our wounds and pains, the richness, what, what potentially could come forth from that given mm -hmm. healing and time mm -hmm. and love, friendship. And then this, maybe a third area that I mentioned earlier about simplicity and co as opposed to a drive towards ever more convenience, ever more, oh, but that could be better, perfectionist sort of attitude. What are situations of simplicity where we felt, uh, and what are situations that it's all, it seems so, it's all perfect, it's such a nice color on the wall, it's such a, a nice carpet, it's such a nice view, it's such a nice temperature, it's such a nice food, it's such an. And where am I? Where's the aliveness? Where's the feeling of completeness or mm -hmm. ease, rela like <sighs> contentment? Even the question of what is satisfaction? What's another word? What is your word for mm -hmm. that? How do you experience that in your cells? Does it feel like do, tau, for example? Does it feel like warm sunshine? Does it feel that even that starting a conversation in terms mm -hmm. of what's the texture of satisfaction mm -hmm. in your experience, and then start to let that we get we start instead of mm -hmm. planning how it's going to be feeling. Okay, I have a no, I have it in my mm -hmm. nose, or I have the taste for satisfaction, and I I go a bit blindly, kind of feeling my way. I don't know why that looks. It sounds so good on paper. It looks so good, but I I feel this way. It feels more dewy or feels more sunshiny or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So following our nose, mm -hmm. but being aware of the, the human, so human tendency to, to, from a place of lack, dissatisfaction, to try to make it better, and then I can relax. And if we can play with, this is, it's messy, but what if I relax first with the mess? And I'm staying in touch, I'm not saying it's not messy, mm -hmm. it is messy, but it's not, that's not a reason because it's messy or uncertain 
or unfinished that I have to be from uptight, from alarm system, from not enough, from problem. I'm alarmed and I have to fix it. And then I could maybe be myself mm -hmm. or taste life or something, whatever else. Permission to be here. I don't have to earn permission to be here. So feeling that taste of not enough or problem and how we move and how that is dissatisfying. And it will be. <laughs> and it always has been. But that it is possible to feel, okay, there's uncertainty. It could easily make my alarm system come on and I could easily go from fear and um, control. But I could also feel that oh, I could practice feeling, even though there's uncertainty and some alarm, I can also feel my back. I can also feel the ground. I can also feel a deep okayness in the words of John de Reuter. And from there, some, some movement does emerge that, that might be a really nice, satisfying responsiveness that in the moment is satisfying and tends toward bringing more um, satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Contentment, ease, mm -hmm. yeah, permission to be, mm -hmm. yeah, not yeah. because I earned, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good, um, good answer. I, I, really, I can really feel what you mean, and then mm -hmm. that it's something new for me. It's, mm -hmm. Thank you for this mm -hmm. gift. Yes. <coughs> The last question, um, do you have a heart desire you want to, to share with, with the world, with us? Mm. What yeah. mm. want to give? In this moment, my, my wish is to give you the sense of, please practice your meditation, <laughs> or please give a place for your for your path to unfold mm -hmm. that's the feeling in the moment that's it's not something like if i could hear the question differently like what do i want to give to the world mm -hmm. but in this moment the way i hear the question is different and it feels mm -hmm. like i i feel this really heartfelt wish that that you would meditate or if you if it's if your path is more now about okay, you, you have the confidence to start doing that work mm -hmm. or really being present with your child or taking a year off from work or cutting your hours by 20% and taking care of your mother in the hospital or going to India, whatever, playing the guitar more. That Whatever is the thing that feeds your heartfelt love of aliveness or willingness to be in contact with this weird, mysterious, astounding mm -hmm. aliveness. Please, please do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really thankful f for this time with you here. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thanks that you shared your wisdom with us, yes. and uh, yeah, that we. Uh, mm. I hope it inspire you and yeah. Thank you so much, also, for listening, participating, yeah. by watching, whenever yeah. you do. And thank you so much for the invitation and <laughs> the heartfelt questions and listening. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. You. Yeah, thank you very much for listening and um, if you're interested uh, you can check another video and uh, yeah, all the best for you, you all. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>